All right, so we're going to go ahead and start off here. Um, I just put this case in, or put this together. I ran it like twice, and look at how much dirt's in the gearbox. That's all dirt and fucking grit in there. Brand new ring gear, already getting dirty. Already getting dirty in there. But anyways, here's what you're trying to do. So you want to hold your input gear and rock this back and forth. So you see that little bit of play I got right there. Hopefully you can hear it. That, that little click is actually the each teeth hitting the teeth on the input. So they're kind of like slapping each other. Just like how you set the mesh on your, your um, spur and, and pinion on the motor. Uh, so pretty much what you want to do here is you... I start off with fresh cases. I go ahead and replace the case too because you see right here. If you look right there, I have a crack right there. My case is actually done right here. Uh, there's a split. Um, one good upgrade while I'm showing you this is these GPM um, hinge pin braces. You see how it's got this little tab right there and this tab right there? That actually locks into the chassis and makes it way harder for it to break your diff case. I uh, Actually, before I ran these braces, the diff case would actually just rip clean off. It would you you would hit the rear and it would twist it sideways and just pull the screws clean through there. But these these keys actually lock in and stop that. I haven't broke a diff case in a long time. It is a great uh, modification. It'll only cause your arms to break. It will not break anything else. It'll only break your arms. I don't know how that crack happened. That must be just. I, I jumped these things like fucking 30 or 40 feet. I'm, I'm like the YouTubers, but just I don't have a damn camera to, to record the shit. Uh, anyways, so on your ring gear, do um, do one or two on, on this. See what it feels like. And do one or two. You're going to slide it down over this. Them 8 millimeter shims. Let me grab one right quick so I can show you. Um... Your little eight millimeter shim, these is gonna go right here. Do two of them, two of them right there. And also, when you insert this in the case, don't reach or reach around your case with your fingers and hold your finger here, and hold your finger in there on that pinion. But don't hold it tight. Just hold it tight enough to where you don't to where you don't allow it to get any back and forth motion. You kind of want this to be sturdy, but you want it to spin freely. If you tighten it up too much, if it, you can tighten the grub screw down as much as you want. Like, don't, don't get that uh, mixed up. Just don't, make sure you don't have this ring gear or that pinion trying to push out hard because it'll actually, the shim that goes behind, the shim right here ar around that that I dropped on, on there you can see it right there uh, it, it will actually put too much pressure on that shim and cause the shim to flatten out across the teeth and actually move away so it won't even be shimmed anymore you can't over tighten or you can't pinch the ring gear or the you can't pinch the this and this too tight you just kind of want to hold it there steady and then tighten it up and make sure you're losing you're using Loctite on this gear or on your input cup. Be sure you're, you're using blue Loctite. Alright, so. Another thing is. Make sure that that diff. Has a washer that keeps your bearing from doing this. You want a shim right there, man. Arma forgot to put one. They put one on this side. This is this is brand new out of a, uh, my Arma Mojave. Uh, they shimmed this side. Forgot to put a shim on this side. So that, well, that, that is one thing that sucks about getting an assembled one, man. Them, they're, they're real lousy up there. Quality control on these trucks is not the best. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big armor fan, but I will say their quality control is uh, pretty pretty shitty, man. It's, it's pretty fucking shitty. Anyways. Um, 
This is one I'm not using. I threw this together just to show you. This is actually a, a straight cut gear. This is for a um well, no, this is this is the right gear. Okay, anyways. This is the uh this is actually that um like two month old ring gear. It's still in spectacular shape. You know you know your ring and pinions wore out when you don't have these um the flat spots on top of the teeth. You see how it's got them flat spots on it? That's a healthy, good gear. But here's what you're gonna do here. You're going to put a shim right here. Drop drop a shim there. Let me grab a bearing right quick. And let me see if I have a out drive right quick that I can stick in here so you can actually see what I'm doing. See what I got going on. Okay, well actually this, I don't, but I'll have to show you in a different way. Okay, so, here's my bearing. I got my washer right here. Washer goes there. Bearing on. And look, I don't have the black proper out drive. So I'm going to show you with this. This is the same size and everything. Just imagine that this gear is an out drive. Picture it, picture it as being that right there. I just don't have a spare one, and I don't feel like going and trying to find one. Uh, you're going to... What you're, what you're trying to do here is you're shimming the bearing to sit still. Uh, I don't have to show you a sh a, uh, how to shim the internals because I, I shim my internals exactly like how Arma does. I do one shim behind each sun gear, one shim behind each satellite gear, and that that's it. That is all I do. People say uh, you have to shim the internals, you have to shim the internals. There's people that are getting it mixed up. They're thinking you have to shim the internals of this. They're not understanding that you got to shim this. They they don't they don't understand that you're having to bring so it's pretty much this. You're bringing your ring gear over to your pinion. You know, cuz your gears are like your gears are like this from the factory. And when you don't shim, you have all that play, so it just slips right past it and shreds the teeth off the top. So what you're trying to do, come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. What you're trying to do is get this as deep in there as you can. You want the you want the teeth as deep in there as you can, but you still want it to have the slightest amount of play. It's just like setting your the uh, mesh on your ring and pinion or your um, spur and pinion. You want it as tight as it can be, with it still having the slightest amount of slop. A little bit of play in between each gear is is you know you have to have play in between each gear or else it'll just shred your teeth it'll it'll shred your teeth okay so this is what shimming the bearing does Let me get it to where I can hold it real good and show you so you see how my bearing does not move any my bearing is perfectly stationary it's perfect and it don't have to be when you get it all Together, it's okay if there's the slightest amount of side-to-side -side play, but you want that to sit still. You don't want it to be able to. Uh, you don't want it to be able to move like that. You 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 don't want that. And when you don't shim this backside right here, that's what causes it uh, to move. So the reason here is is that you can shim on this side of the bearing all you want. You can shim right there all you want. You can make it brain come over all you want. But because the inner race spins on that a slight bit, and the inner race is the inner race of the bearing. This is called the outer race. You got the outer race and the inner race. So that inner race will spin on that and actually kind of, it'll actually kind of uh, get the tolerance out some. So this bearing will actually have slop. Both of them will. It does does this on each side and then what you got is you got your bearings are sitting stationary because your bearings are being pinched down by the holder so your bearings don't move any but what can happen is the diff the diff can still move back and forth inside your bearings so the, my bearing is staying still right now and I'm moving the diff that is what your diff will do after a while 
it, it will start getting slop in the bearings. Actually, let me show you what this did right here. Um, if 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 I can, if I can. So mm, it's kind of hard to right now. Um, but yeah. So when you drop it in there, you you're automatically your the diff case is going to push up against this bearing here. So this bearing is going to be always kind of spinning on that. And sometimes the inner race can spin. Sometimes the bearing can spin so fast, so you'll get some grit in there, and it'll cause the, the inner inner race to spin a little bit, and that will spin out your, um, that will eat a little bit of this up, what your bearing sits against. And um, like I said, you'll, you'll get, your bearing will move side to side, or your diff will move side to side, but your bearings will sit still. So pr pr pretty much you got these just sliding in, in in there and that's causing your mesh to come out um, so pretty much what you want to do is you want to do your um, shim whoops where'd it go where'd it go where'd it go, where'd it go? oh here it is all right so you just want to shim this side. Just just shim this side right here. Uh, I, I'm assuming you already took off your um, ring gear, so and filled it back up and put it all back together. So you're gonna have to take it back apart, sadly. <laughs> oh, and another thing is is that after the first few runs, you're gonna want to come back. Or after the first or second run, hell, you're gonna want to come back and tighten these ring gear screws again. These screws will come loose, and make sure that you have a quality driver. You do not, these screws right here are so shitty. They round out so easily. Um, this screw right here is actually a different screw. This is a this is an armor screw. This is just some kind of, this might be like a Traxxas or a Team Associated screw. They're a lot deeper. You can see that, you can see the, you really can't see on camera, but this has a deeper, much deeper, deeper hole than this one so this one will round easier but you want to take it out and retighten these you want to retighten them all four of them i only got two in this because i'm just showing you with this one um but yeah you want to tighten up all of them make sure that they're not coming loose on you because they do they will come loose they won't come all the way loose but when they do come loose you you're it's it's going to adjust your mesh by thousands of an inch or more you know and that's a big deal in in the clearance world especially gear world i mean these teeth are pretty small you want as much as you can get so and also if you put it in there and it's feeling rough you don't want to bring the pinion too close to the ring gear you don't want to bring it this way too much or it'll actually kind of mess your um mesh up won't mesh properly so you kind of want to get it See, I got a little bit of slop in mine right now, which is not good. I don't, I don't like getting any kind of slop in there. I possibly, yep. See, look, when I spin this, if you watch my my shim, what I was ha telling you about about it flattening out and moving away from that is what it's trying to do right now. So. uh I might have to go in here and adjust this. I actually just busted this pr pretty good yesterday. I took took a bad bad hand and had to got to replace my diff case. It pulled it, it ripped, ripped the diff case up a little bit. So I gotta take my shock tower off. And yes, I'm going to straighten that bitch and reuse it. I do not believe in getting the N2C stuff and getting upgraded shock towers and shit. Because if I'd have had a stronger shock tower, this would not have happened. It would not see my my truck's fine. Like my truck's my truck's perfectly fine. If I would have had this a stronger piece, it'd have ripped this clean off the bulkhead and then ripped my shocks, broke my shocks, broke these, probably broke my probably bent bent my axles. This brace right here, I have absolutely I've zigzagged that brace on a bad uh, landing before. It bent my shock towers over the same way. And because the shock tower can bend, it does not break your bulkhead off. It don't it don't tear up any other stuff. It actually absorbs all of your shock when you hit 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 the ground. 
This is the worst I've bent it. This is like a year old shock tower, man. I just keep reusing them and reusing them and reusing them. I don't like buying upgrading stuff. Like as you can see, I've got uh, the Creighton EXB arms on this thing. I don't I don't do any RPM. I well I say that I have RPM mud deflectors and the RPM bumper, but I do not run RPM arms. I don't run RPM wing mount. I don't run any of that stuff. It's more expensive, and the Arma stuff is just as good, dude. It, it, it's so much better, actually. The fucking RPM shit will flex so bad that your arms, or that your, um, these can bend. They can pop out. They'll flex so much that it'll stress this and, and bow it open a lot, and it can actually break these off. That's not a common thing, but RPM can cause this this right here to, to flare because it bends past its it goes past the travel limit. So, um, yeah, man, it's you're you're pretty much just trying to get it to do this right here. You want that you want that little bit of slop right there. That's what you want. You want just a little bit though, not much at all. You you want to get it as good as you can. But tightening in the ring, tightening, retightening the ring gear and shimming that bearing, and of course shimming your bearing with these big shims. Th this is a big shim. This shim will uh, that shim will actually push the ring gear over some uh, towards your pinion. Of course, that way it gets a tighter mesh. I use about two to three of them. It just depends on, really depends on the bearings. I have a brand new case right now I'm fixing to put on. And with it, I'm going to have to make a little modification to the, to the case to where I can shim it up tightly. Or, or, well, not tightly. The way I like it, that I call it tight. I don't shim it tight to where it's like click, click, click. Notchy. I know some guys. I work at an RC shop, man. And I, I see some guys that come in there and they'll have their diff shim so tight you can't even roll the diff because each teeth is just like slamming into each other. And I'm just like, ugh, man, this ain't going to work. And of course, I go arguing with you and stuff, saying, "Oh, it's fine, it's fine." But you know, I've you know, I've had the same. This is a damn two-month-old ring gear, bro. This is the best-looking ring gear I've ever had come out after two months. It's amazing. It's incredible. But you are still going to break the pins behind the sun gear, and uh, you're still going to snap off the ends of the the out drives every every once in a while. That's just something that you're gonna deal with but it's a hell of a lot better than fucking breaking a teeth i'd much rather break this off or the sun gear in there on this side and just disassemble the whole diff and replace just the sun gear than having to replace this fucking expensive ass ring gear bro i have been through so many of these i mean 30 i think it's like 22 dollars for a ring gear and like 13 dollars for opinion that shit adds up that shit adds up quick especially